Okay, so I am uh, on my way to start my day. I've got four separate clients today, four cases. Every one of them is reactivity. 75% uh, of the cases I see are reactivity cases. Uh, when I was a younger trainer, it wasn't so much. A lot of times it was just straight up real true aggression. Um, but it was more like obedience, like teach my dog to walk on a leash, teach my dog not to jump, teach my dog um, you know, to come when I call them. It, it wasn't such like intense, severe behaviors that I've learned to become a specialist in because that's what's prompting people to call me. And it seems like only a few trainers you know, understand the dynamics of, of what's going on and what it takes to actually fix or rehabilitate these cases. And a lot of, you don't want to call it rehabilitation. If I can step in, handle the dog, like I had a case yesterday, the dog had been through two years of positive reinforcement training. The owner tried everything and just wouldn't let go of the fact that the issue was not, the, you know, it was not, it, it had to be addressed for what it was. It was not something that's going to be you know, what we wish it was as far as how to resolve it or where it's coming from. So as soon as I showed an understanding to the dog and communicated to and changed the equipment, boom, the dog just listened, like after years and years of trying. So is that rehabilitation or is that an instinct in a dog to kind of sense something that is that makes them not have to do something that they've struggled with in the first place? That's a lot of cases. And then there is shaping that into a new habit, especially when they're habit of running a different program, if you will, is around their owner or in their home, around certain people. So that's what we have to do, and that takes time, I guess, to rehabilitate the relationship, right? Like two people are already married, and the people know how to be humans and love, but their relationship is kind of off kilter, so that's the work that has to be done. That's why I have to emphasize on the owner, and yes, some dogs just are more particular about how you operate around them to foster a balanced or uh, you know an unhealthy relationship where dogs are acting out and not listening in real life um, so again where does that all stem from it's the dog in most cases treating the owners or certain elements of your shared life or the environments you exist in as a resource you know the, the dog following around getting all excited to see you it looks like they're just happy and enthusiastic and they love us love that's a human emotion Preference, um, contentment, security, um, not, I guess a dog version of anxiety is worrying about how the needs get met or, you know, and again, you feed your dog, you shelter them, you give them everything they do need, but if your dog has to worry about when you're going to get up to go to the kitchen next to go do something or when the next event's going to happen in the home or what you're going to encounter on a walk, that's anxiety because they shouldn't have to unless there was a real bona fide threat and the whole thing that I teach my clients and any dog I own um, is to have the dog check in so that they learn right from the start that through commands that when they're in these situations either pre preventatively or now that you have an existing issue through these commands they can attain deep levels of focus a feeling of leadership by us wanting them to attain that and just logistically when they see a distraction instead of fixating on it or anticipating it before it happens in more of a present conscious mindset um, where they're checking in, literally looking at the owner to replace so it filters the intensity of the sensory input and it of course gets the dog to feel that you're in control, not them. And it's not a physical, domineering, threatening control. It's just like, do something that you're more suited to and let me show you that you can just kind of hang out with me till I tell you the next event and not have to worry about every move I make, which is, again, that is not a dog loving an owner or preferring to be with an owner. It's seeing the owner as a resource that they have to hold, protect, and question when they tell them what to do. And then that's when they get separation anxiety. They think that their primary resource is nowhere to keep track of, so maybe they're not going to get their needs met that way, the way they do in a common common front like when they're just living with their dogs and that's why we create such consistent because the thing is with it if you're only doing it part-time and owners always give me pushback these days when I'm like no you're not being consistent enough well I'm doing the work I'm busy I, I hear you but your dog needs to see 100% consistency I give you ways to you know fit this into your busy life you can use tethering at times as long as you're doing the work when it really counts you can create your dog give your dog a lot of walks and exercise teach them to carry a pack so when you walk them they get more exercise teach them to run on a treadmill if it's too hot or you can't walk or whatever the issue is hire somebody there's a million and one services that'll come and walk exercise and then pack even with a pack it's good it's a healing pack they're great they'll come walk your dog and they're trainers they know what they're doing but there's always, you know, not always, but a lot of times. And again, why do you act like this, Brett? Why do you complain? Why do you bitch about the owners? I'm not bitching. I really care. I want people to get this to work for them. I show them their dog listens to me. I post videos of my dogs being well-behaved. 
Um, it's not magic. It's time, effort put in. Every day I have a plan for my dogs. I have a 9 a.m. Sunday appointment. Uh, first thing I did was get my dogs on a walk and do some flirt pole exercises with, with my Rottweiler, Sue. Um, why? Because I know he'll need that if I'm going to go to work for the next five hours. You know, it, and it just, I don't think people are doing that daily, and there's always a reason, especially in a place like LA where everyone's busy, everyone's trying to pay the bills, everyone's trying to get the next level up. And, it, you know, again, it just makes it hard for dogs to see that you're present enough or a dog 24 seven is a dog. And if you're rehabilitating something, you need a few months to create a new habit of consistent, you know, training and an awareness and a certain relationship that is a, a constant. You can't deviate from that. I say this word for word in 18 million ways and a million analogies of how to kind of see it from like how a human would perceive it. Kids go to school. They can't just run around the school and follow the teacher everywhere or feel they have to pay, pay the bills or, you know, prepare the lunches. They just show up and they go to their scheduled classroom and they sit in an assigned seat for a designated time while the teacher teaches one lesson, then the next one. Then they get scheduled recess with a monitor and rules so things are never out of order. Why would that not be any different for a dog 